people are always asking me how to set up servos. And okay. I never had a chance to like sit down and just walk somebody through it before. But if anybody is worth sitting down to uh, walk through it, it's it's Mr. Sean Morrison. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, um, because you are actually, you are, well, maybe people don't know your name, uh, but you are such a supporter of Rotor Riot and do so much for the channel. You, um, I think you, am I right that you build quads for the store as well? Some of the ready to flies? I do, yeah. I uh, yeah. Occasionally, yeah. Uh, Ron is their major builder. I do them occasionally whenever he gets a little bit too backed up. Yeah. So, um, if if there's anybody who has earned the right to call in a favor, it's you, and I'm happy to have the opportunity to <laughs> finally you. make a tutorial about how to set up servos. So, first of all, I have to say, servos in Betaflight are a gigantic pain in the ass. So when we go through this and you and the viewers are thinking, this is a huge pain in the ass, you're right. Don't do, if you really need servos, like for something like a wing or a, use iNav. Servos are so much easier to use in iNav. Yeah, but, I've used it before. But we're not going to do that today. We're going to do it the hard way. No. So what, what flight controller are you using, Sean? That's the first question I would ask. Um, this is the HTLRC forward... F7 flight controller. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is we need to identify a pin that we're going to use, or a pad that we're going to use uh, for our servo output. And the problem is that this pin or pad needs to have its own timer, a dedicated timer, which is an okay. internal resource in the F7 chip that most of us don't ever think about. And the most reliable way we can do this is to use the LED pad. So I'm looking I'm looking at a pin out right now. Yeah, it does have an LED pad. So are you not using the LED pad for anything else? Uh, no, I'm not using it for anything else. Okay, perfect. So the LED pad always has its own timer. So it okay. should always work for servo output. So can you go ahead and plug it in and can you screen share so we can look at your resource remapping sure, and so forth? figure out how to screen share. Okay. So let's go into the configuration tab. I think there, I can't remember, but there may be a feature we need to enable for servos. So scroll down. Is there a servo feature here? Servo tilt. Enable servo tilt, and that will give us two servo outputs predefined. Highlight that question mark, and let's just okay. remind everybody what that does. Well, I say remind. Most people have probably never used this. So the purpose of this originally is to have a gimbal that is automatically stabilized on the pitch and roll axis. So the camera will tilt and roll as the camera as the uh, quadcopter moves. But that that isn't okay. how most we're going to use it. We're just going to use it to get to servo outputs. OK, so we'll hit save on that. Now, I, Sean, I also noticed that there is a feature channel forwarding, which is labeled forward aux channels to servo outputs. It sure sounds like that's what we want. But um, every time okay. I've done this in the past, we've just used servo tilt. And as long as you need two or fewer servos, that's how I've always done it. Um, okay. I can't, if you need more than two servos, I think you have to use channel forwarding, but I don't, I don't remember exactly what the difference is between them. We're just going to go with servo tilt for now, though. Okay. Um, so let's go now into the CLI. All right, let me save that. Okay. And connect CLI. Okay. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to do a resource. And that is going to give us our resource assignments. And we want to find the LED strip resource. Is. That is the LED pin or pad that we're going to be using. And we can see it is on pin D12. Okay. So uh, let's type resource. Oh, well done. Resource LED strip one, none. We're going to clear that off of there. Okay. And I can't remember if the servo numbering starts with one or zero. I think it starts with one. So we'll type resource servo one D12. It'll actually, the autocomplete will actually tell us. 
So type Good. servo. And now it should, yeah, one and then D12. Uh-huh. Okay. okay. And save. So here's another thing that's silly and confusing, maybe, is in the CLI, the servos are numbered starting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. In the GUI, they're numbered 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So servo 0 is the one we're going to deal with. Computer code. Uh, yeah, uh, normally it's yeah. the other way. Normally the CLI starts from 0, and the GUI starts from 1, so they did it backwards this way just because, I don't know. Yeah. And what we want is, we want, uh, we want to control this servo most likely with aux one, right? Or aux two, which aux channel are you going to be using to control um, this servo? Let's see, let's say aux three, just because I never use aux three for anything. Four might be for RSSI, and okay. one and two might get used for something, I'm not sure yet. So let's just say three, just in case okay. I never use that. So you're, you're highlighting channel three now though, that's going to be literally channel three, which so is probably when you're like your rudder or something. A3. So yeah, we'll go A3. Now at this point, if we and if we save, so at this point, if you hit that enable live mode button and then you like move the servo, move the channel, the servo should move. Am I able to emulate that having a radio hooked up to it, or do I need to have a radio paired by bound? To it? Uh, that's a good question. It would be uh, yes, you can go to the motors tab. I think should if I you go to the mode first or no, I'm not sure about that. Why don't you okay. try enable it? Go ahead and enable it. That causes the servos to begin moving, even okay. though the quad's not armed or anything. And then go to the motors tab. I okay. think if you say, uh, where there should be servo outputs here. I think you should have servo out. Oh, oh, darn. You can see the servo outputs, but you can't actually control them with a slider. So let's see if we can get the servo working, though. I want to see if we get the servo working. So I guess, I guess you'd still have to wire up the servo, though. Everything is so small on here. That's a pretty cool little, is that a magnifying light? Uh, it doesn't oh, have a light on it. I think Drew's has a light on it, but mine doesn't. Oh, that's, that's pretty slick, dude. I mean, yeah, it's not going to win you any uh, fashion fashion points. It but... look, doesn't look cool, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, so the ground's going to ground, five volts going to the red wire of the servo, and the signal wire, which is orange in this case, is going to LED pad. Yep, correct. That's a cheap All right. $2.50 servo, but <laughs> it should well. work. All right. And so, have you got the receiver channel mapped? Yes, the receiver is mapped and everything. Um, I'm guessing I need to use the LiPo for this, right? Correct. Okay. Where's the and we need to go into Betaflight and turn live servo on. Okay. I think I... Oh, I didn't turn that on. I turned on whatever the other thing was. Enable live mode, is that what we're doing? Yep. Good old light bulb. Because I haven't... Like I said, I didn't build this quad. <laughs> Always, sure this thing doesn't catch on fire. Always smoke stop. I heard the servo make noise. So it did something. Well, that, that might have mean it's got a signal. Maybe. <gasps> <laughs> okay, worked oh, first time. Awesome. All three, Woo! yeah, all three. Whoa, it just stopped working. It worked for a few minutes anyway. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to take that as a win. I'm going to take yeah. that as a win. Okay, so hey, Sean, pop back to, let me just uh, pop back to your servo screen here for a minute. So then suffice to say, uh, to anybody who's configured a servo, you know that you need to configure the throws. And you can also, as you can see here on the servos tab, you can change the min, the max, and the direction and rate. And you're, it wasn't actually moving very far, was it? Was it moving the amount that you expect? It looked like it was moving like 90 degrees, 45 degrees. So, um... When I flipped it into the center, it moved the servo to the center, and then when I flipped it I see. the other direction, then it's because it has three position switch. Gotcha. And obviously, I still haven't uh, maximized those endpoints. Gotcha. Uh, I only added, I only went 150 to 150 on the AETR. I didn't actually increase channel okay. seven, whatever it was. Okay. Okay. So the movement so was travel further, or maybe I burn it because it went too far. I don't know. That's possible. Regardless. You can set those endpoints either in your radio or you can set them here in the CL, uh, in the GUI using the min, the max. And then if you, we pull down that rate, pull down real quick. Mm -hmm. okay. So you can set the rate and just reduce the percent. And I, I think you can also reverse it from here. If you, if you scroll down further, can you? Oh yeah. Negative. Yeah. 
Okay. Nice. So all your normal servo tweaks, but that's the gist of it. Cool. All right, now man. I got to just figure out my endpoints and get this thing right. That's awesome. Thank you very much. For sure. I'm glad to help. I hope you have some spares of that $2.50 servo. Oh, yeah. I got a ton of them. I ripped this out of an airplane, actually, just for this session. Cool, man. So we'll be good. Thank you so much. That was All awesome. right. Later on, man. See you later. I'll let you go. Bye. Bye.